there's certainly a lot of buzz around the NGSS because it represents a new vision for K-12 science education in America. So when educators step into a training about the NGSS, they often arrive with a number of burning questions that they're hoping to have answered. Their questions can range from where did the NGSS come from anyway, to what is a performance expectation, and even what will the assessments look like. So we recommend that you start your very first training by addressing some of the more straightforward questions about the NGSS. You can do this by presenting a brief PowerPoint that can be found in this section of the website. This is not a replacement for hands-on activities about the NGSS. But if you start your training by answering some of the more urgent questions, it will help to put your participants' minds at ease. We've broken the PowerPoint into four sections. Each section addresses one big question about the NGSS. The first section is all about why there's a need for new science standards. Essentially, standards are shifting away from being a list of scientific facts that students need to know and towards a more dynamic representation of how science actually works. The next section is all about how the NGSS is structured. This is where you can introduce your participants to the three dimensions of the NGSS. This is also a chance to introduce a useful framing analogy, which comes from the National Science Teachers Association. In this analogy, we say that understanding the NGSS is a piece of cake. If the performance expectation is a student baking a chocolate cake, there are a number of skills and ideas that a student would need to have learned. For instance, the science and engineering practices represent the baking tools and techniques that a student would need. The disciplinary core ideas represent the chocolate cake itself, which is the so-called content of the dessert. And the cross-cutting concepts represent the frosting, because chocolate frosting is an important part of many different types of desserts, not just cake. The third section of the PowerPoint addresses questions about what events led to the creation of the NGSS. A suite of science education research over the past few decades informed the writing of the Framework for K-12 Science Education. This framework was the conceptual foundation for the NGSS, which were released for the states to adopt in April of 2013. The final section of the PowerPoint addresses what will come next in terms of implementing the NGSS in the classroom. This section gives an overview of the basic phases of the NGSS transition. Keep in mind that this PowerPoint is specific to California's timeline, so you want to check your state's Department of Education website to ensure that you're presenting the next steps for your state. At the end of this presentation, it's important to allow ample time for questions and discussion. Keep in mind that some questions might not have answers yet, and that's okay. Keep the conversation moving and keep the big picture in mind. The goal is to share some basic ideas about the NGSS that will lead to a deeper understanding before diving into the hands-on activities for each dimension. Remind participants that this is a process and that they should focus on making progress towards implementation rather than expecting an overnight change. Once you've finished your group discussion, it's time to dive into the first dimension of the NGSS. If you'd like to see some hands-on activities for each dimension, be sure to check out the rest of this website.